Hey everyone, welcome back to another Niche Pursuits coaching call for Niche Site Project 3. This is uh, coaching call number 6. It seems like they're flying by uh, here real quick. I've got Samara with me, of course, on the call. Samara, how you doing? I'm okay, Spencer. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm uh, doing pretty good. Does it seem like these calls are going quick to you or, or slow? Slow. <laughs> I would say more slow, slow than but slow than fast. Yeah, you're you're more excited to get the website up and and running and the week long or two week breaks in between the calls isn't that quick, I guess. No time time stands still. I think I mentioned. Yeah, no, I. I guess for me it seems like they're going quicker. I don't know why. Maybe because I have so many other uh, little business things going on, and it always seems like there's another call right around the corner. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, That's okay, though. I'm happy to be here on call six. This is awesome. Ready to get started. <laughs> Absolutely. So you took a little trip to uh, Florida. Now you're back in Spain, right? I am, yep. Yep. Did uh, y- Do you have a preference of where you'd rather be this time of year, Spain or Florida? Um, it was nice to be on vacation, for sure. Um, so it's hard to come back and... I'm a little depressed, you know, back to reality, um, but, but yeah, but yeah, it's good to be home, it's good to sleep in my own bed, it's good to see friends and kind of get back to the routine, for sure, so, yeah. it's all yep. good. Absolutely, I know how that goes on vacation, it's like, it's great to be on vacation, but it definitely is good to be home as well. Exactly. So. I survived the trip, which is my biggest concern, um, and so, so yeah, so now it's back to work, Let's get to work. Yep. Absolutely. We're ready to do it. So I hope you're ready because I actually am going to give you a lot of work. Your workload is not going to get lighter after this call. That's what I like to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, good. Right. Well, you'd be ready for it. So <laughs> coaching call number six is a very important one. Uh, we're going to talk about long-term content strategies. Of course, content is the core of your website, so it is vitally important here. Again, our lovely project overview and I just realized I didn't animate all the other slides, so we can handle that, though. That's okay. <laughs> It'll be less impressive. But, uh, yeah, so the overview, I mean, we're now here on, it looks like, step six and seven, actually, is basically what we're going to cover today, about developing a long-term content strategy, and then how to actually go about writing and publishing content, what makes great content. And so those are the things that we're going to cover today. Um, and as you can see, we're moving here pretty quick. We only got uh, another five or so main points. Um, but this is a big one that uh, really is ongoing forever, right? You don't stop publishing content. It's just today we're really going to dive in deep for the first time. But hopefully we'll be coming back to these strategies on a recurring basis uh, as we build out the site. Okay. Okay, so developing a long-term content strategy, again, uh, there's not the anticipation here of the bullet points. They're all there for you to see so everyone can cheat and and read ahead, but uh, we're okay with that. So uh, developing a long-term content strategy, obviously, when you write your articles, there's a few main things that you want to consider. They need to be keyword-focused, and I think I've drilled that home pretty well. That's why we're doing all the the keyword research. Of course, they need to be well written. The spelling and grammar need to be in place. Use paragraphs, bullet points, and numbers liberally. And can I just make like a sidebar, side note here? Please. Um, the, the the using of paragraphs and you know, in particular paragraphs. It's funny. When I get an email and it's all one paragraph, I immediately know like it's not worth reading. Like it, it's just funny because there's something about people that know how to use spacing in paragraphs, like their IQ level goes up dramatically. Um, and the same thing, it's funny. I was checking my spam um, section of nichepursuits.com for comments, and. You know, there's like 500 spam comments there, and I can scroll through very quickly, and just by visually seeing which one has the correct spacing in paragraphs, I know it's not spam. 
it's it's funny. Like I will scroll through literally in ten seconds five hundred comments, and I can pick out which ones are real comments just by the way they look. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. anyways, side note: don't don't be afraid to use your paragraphs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I imagine also for, like, readability purposes, right? Oh, like, no oh. one wants to dig into this gigantic paragraph, right? Big you wanna... time. Big yeah. time. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. um, just a little pet peeve of mine. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll get back to business. All of our emails will now be giant paragraphs. Just saying. <laughs> People are going to annoy me now and email <laughs> me pages of no spaces. Okay. All right. Uh, make sure it's valuable to the reader. Um, things like having charts and data comparisons... Make sure you're answering their queries, um, meaning think of the user. Um, use a combination of written, image, video content, uh, and we're going to dive into some examples here. But uh, then also internally and externally link to other valuable content. So don't be afraid to share great resources uh, for additional content that's out there. Um, linking is great. Okay, so. The first point here, being keyword focused, Um, you want to use the targeted keyword in your title in WordPress. This is the H1 tag. So if you read an SEO article that says you must use H1 tags, just realize you don't need to do anything. You're using WordPress. Your title is your H1 tag. Okay. Okay. So um, make sure to use your keyword in there. So an example keyword, uh, make money from your website. An example title would be 53 ways to make money from your website. And this is an example that I've shared. This is an article on nichepursuits.com that uh, does very well. So you'll see that it's not only my keyword, right? But there's additional words and descriptions to, to make it more interesting. But the core keyword is there in the title. Um, use the keyword two to four times in the article. All right. Use it at least at the beginning and the end of the article, and then usually somewhere in the middle. But there, there's not necessarily a magic number here, but I, as a rule of thumb, use it two to four times, no matter how long your article is. Um, if you start getting crazy and are using your keyword eight or ten times in an article, that could probably be considered keyword stuffing. Google will penalize you for using your keyword too much. Okay? Okay. Um, And then use related keywords in your H2 or H3 tags. These are just subheadings, right? So within WordPress, and again, this is just a well-structured article. You would probably write an article like this anyways. Um, You know, they're going to have sort of sub-points or or subheadings, right? And you're going to hopefully use keywords in these subheadings. So you can find related keywords with Longtail Pro, of course, or you can go to Google related searches. So if we pull up a quick example here, which, let's see, I will need to pull some things up here real quick. What's the difference between H2 and H3? They're, they're both types of subheadings? One's a subheading and one's a sub-subheading or something? Or? Right. Um, they're just... Uh, the emphasis is a little bit different. So like an H2, usually the si- think of it as size. So an H2 is going to be a bigger size than an H3. Okay. Um, so it, part of it comes down to what looks better in the style of the theme that you're using, right? So like on uh, nichepursuits.com, I I use H3 uh, subheadings just because it it looks better. The H2 size is a little bit too big for my articles. Okay, it's a size thing. Yep, it's really just a size thing pretty much. So as an example here, I was going to show. So if I look up survival knife, I'm going to, you know, we're writing an article that uses the keyword survival knife. Um, and then I want to think about, well, what should my subheading keywords be? Uh, one place to do that, of course, is Longtail Pro. And then the other place that I mentioned is Google Related Searches, which is down here at the very bottom. Searches related to Survival Knife. So you might want to consider covering these topics in, in an article. So a subheading might be Military Survival Knife or Wilderness Survival Knife or Rambo knife, those sorts of things, right? So this is um, really a treasure trove of great 
subheadings, great related keywords. Google just tells you, right? So if you're ever in question, you know, what should be some, some points that I should talk about in my articles, well, maybe go over to Google and see what they tell you should be included. So you don't have to worry about the keyword competitiveness of these these subheadings? No, I, I don't um, always worry about that, correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our presentation here and uh, ignore any banging that you hear going on. It's uh, my lovely two-year-old out and about. Okay. So... Uh, let's look at some examples of valuable content. And I do want to just have a little bit of a dialogue here about why we think these are, are good articles. Okay, so first one, how to make paracord survival bracelets, 16 cool projects on survivallife.com, which is pulling up now. And there we go. So... First of all, the title. It's a great title. They use a number in the title. I really like having numbers in my titles. Um, they, you know, they have the keyword, but it's more than just the keyword, right? Um, they have lots of spacing and paragraphs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, they, they've got some cool things here, right? They're they're pointing out other links and um, you know, sort of bolding some things they want people to look at. But they've got a nice image. Uh, you know, how to make paracord bracelets, and then they have a nice, big, bold, sort of numbered things. And as you can guess, every single one of these numbered things really could be an additional keyword, right? So fishtail paracord survival bracelet is sort of the subheading, right? You know, I don't know if this is an H2 or an H3 tag, but it's one of those, okay. right? And they've got lots of multimedia, they've got images, they've got videos, um... You know, just, just a great article. It's very long and in-depth. Um, images are taking a little while to load here, so you can't see it all. But, uh, you know, bullet points, steps, great example of a well-structured, in-depth type article. Okay? Okay. Any questions or is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought I'd show you a couple more. Just to give you an idea of the type of articles that uh, might be considered a good article. Okay. And they all have pop-ups because they're good about email marketing. Um, so best water bottles for kids at school. And again, images, nice bullet points, um, you know, here's sort of a subheading. Even though they could actually could probably do a better job if they made this like an H2 tag or an H3 tag. So it's um, that tells Google that there's a little more emphasis, right? They do have it bolded and underlined, so they're kind of getting that effect from Google anyways. We're saying, hey, this is important. Um, but this, these are like secondary keywords, right? Related keywords. Bottles for the lunchbox. Bottles for the desk. Mm -hmm. uh, bottles for after-school sports, right? And, and they've got lots of images. Um, and, you know, you can, you can buy from them. You know, you can click on the links to buy. So, okay. That's, that looks good. Okay. That's an example. Um, and just one more. How to make Mexican tamales. Right? Okay. Um, and so this one just has tons of very high quality images and descriptions of steps. You know, they have a picture of every single step of the process. So if somebody's searching for how to make Mexican tamales, this is going to be a perfect article for them. So when they created this, they're thinking of the user, very helpful, lots of images, um, and in-depth, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, those are just three examples of well-written pieces of content, okay? So okay. just trying to set the expectation here that um, you know we're not only going to be writing 500-word articles that have no pictures or images and right these we want to shoot for these more in-depth very useful type pieces of content okay all right <clears throat> so writing and publishing content let's answer some common questions that I get so how often should you be publishing content well uh, 
I think the goal here should be to get your first 20 articles or so up as soon as possible, right? So don't don't wait around to, to hit publish on those. Just get them out the door as fast as possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then after that, maybe pick some sort of regular schedule that works for you. You know, that could be once a day, three a week, four a month, um, whatever sort of consistent schedule that you believe that you can keep. So if that's one article a week, just hit publish on one article every single week. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Obviously, more content is better, but you don't want to jeopardize quality and quantity or, or quality to get more quantity and, and that sort of thing. So do something that's that's realistic and just try to be consistent with it. Okay. So how long should your articles be? Uh, again, these are rules of thumb, not exact, but for a pillar article, what I, you know, I'm calling a pillar article, but sort of like a core um, money article, if you will, I would say 2,000 words or more. Um, longer articles do tend to rank better in Google. There's statistics to prove that. Uh, and then your more normal articles, I would do around 1,000 words or so. So that could be a little bit less. It could be a little bit more. Just kind of depends. Okay. Okay. Um, is there like a maximum amount of words? Can an article be too long? A pillar article, for example? Hmm. Are you... There really is no maximum. Okay. Um, I mean, I I've seen articles almost 10,000 words long. See, that to me seems like way too much, right? But I mean, I it don't is, know. It is. And I've never written an article that long. The longest article I've probably ever done, I think, is almost 5,000 words. Okay. Or right around 5,000 words on nichepursuits.com. Um, but I, I, if there's some reason that like a 10,000 article word article makes sense, then I guess there's no maximum. Okay. Right? Okay. But, yeah. So those are some rules of thumb, though. Okay. So how many articles uh, of each type, right? So... Again, sort of as a general rule here, I say one pillar article for every 10 normal articles. Okay. And we're, we're going to talk about categories here in a little bit, but kind of for each category in your website, um, you want to kind of keep that ratio, the, the 1 to 10. So, you know, one article you're going to put a ton of effort into, make this really great resource, and then, you know, 10 additional sort of normal articles to fill out that category. Okay. Okay. So, and I think I already sort of defined a pillar article versus a normal article. It's just longer and more valuable. Um, a pillar article is also usually going to be more shareable or link worthy. And that is kind of why you do this, right? Is if you great, write a great resource, it's much, much easier to get links, to get noticed, people coming to your website, um, that's where most of your marketing is going to come from, is these in-depth pillar articles that you do. And the links that then come to those pillar articles are going to spread the link juice all throughout your website to your other more normal articles. right? Your normal art articles probably aren't something that a lot of people are going to just link to randomly. They, they could, but um, most of the time you're going to get the links to your pillar articles. Okay. Okay, so organizing your content on your site, like you talked about, uh, you're going to want to do uh, categories. And uh, these are, you know, categories within WordPress. So are you familiar with categories? Not really, no. Can't say that I am. Okay. Um, I was going to see if there was anything I could pull up on my screen real quick. Um... Yes. So basically, when you publish a piece of content with in WordPress, you're in sort of the editing window, and I'm going to pull this up in a second. Um, there is a section on the right-hand sidebar that says categories, and uh, so let me pull over my screen. I've actually I'm in NichePursuits.com. Give okay. people an inside look here, right? So I'm if I were to write a new blog post, this is a look like just like anybody else's WordPress. Uh, but over here on the right-hand side, side sidebar are categories, okay? 
So I've got affiliate marketing, Amazon FBA, article marketing, authority sites, buying sites, right? I've got quite a few because I've been around for a long time and there's always sort of new subjects that, that pull up all the time, right? So if I'm writing an article about my latest Amazon FBA stuff, I'm going to check this box, right? It's in the Amazon FBA category. Okay. Um, but if I'm going to be talking about buying websites, I'm going to check that box, right? Or I could do two boxes, just depends. Okay, and then of course you can add new categories and that sort of thing. Okay. So that that's about it. Okay. As far as how to within WordPress. Um, but it's important, a lot of people, um, you know what, I'm not even gonna bring it up unless you bring it up. Categories um, really are just a great way to organize your website. So if you're writing about, um, well, I have camping here later, but if you're writing about, you know, sleeping bags, you're going to check the box for your sleeping gear uh, category. And you're going to just organize everything by checking those boxes. And that really WordPress takes care of the rest. Um, they create category pages for you. They do all sorts of these things, right, for you automatically on the back end. Um, and so you're going to want to link liberally to articles in the same category. Okay. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying there? Yep. 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 Okay. Now, it's not like you're not allowed to link to articles in other categories. You can certainly do that. But uh, it kind of just makes sense. If you're writing, if you have one category all related to uh, sleeping gear, you're going to probably be linking to other articles that you've written about sleeping gear. Okay. Um, so, and this is, a, is going to be an assignment, but you're going to want to start with five to seven categories on your site. So think through what are the initial five to seven categories that I want on my site. Create those in WordPress so that you're ready to check that box when you start writing articles on those. Okay. Um, now, would the idea be to write for each of these categories one pillar article and ten normal articles? Is that the idea? Right, that's that's the ratio, right? Okay. So it's not like the category's finished once you have one no, pillar. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Okay. So the category might end up with 100 articles on it, you know, 10 pillar articles and 90 uh, mm -hmm. normal articles, right? Okay. But yes, that, that is correct. The, okay. the ratio should be the 1 to 10 within each of those categories. Okay. And then I just gave the example here. I think everybody's seen it here. But if you're starting a site on camping, the categories might be hiking gear, sleeping gear, shelter building, fire starting, and water gear, and tips, that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yes. Are, are the category titles keywords, or they don't have to be? Or They, they don't have to be. Okay. Um, and I wouldn't think too hard about that because, yeah, the benefit's not huge there. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right, types of blog posts. So there are so many ways that you can go about writing an article. There's different styles of articles that could be written. And I don't want to try to overwhelm everybody listening in, but there is a great article on digitalmarketer.com about 212 different ideas for blog post types. Okay, and so I do want to review just a couple of these, and you can see the ones I'm going to hone in on here, but uh, if we look at this article, it, it, it's huge. There's no way we can go over all of these, um, but you know they have things like, I'm looking this, at this infographic, you could do a list post right, where you list out a bunch of great things. You could do a how-to blog post. You could do a case study post. You could do a series post, like I've done with how to start, how to bootstrap a software company. I've written three of the five in that series. Um, you can do a YouTube cut-up, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, yeah, you could do a interview blog post, a quote, type post, content aggregator, anyways, on and on and on. So this is a great way to brainstorm, right? So if you're looking at your keywords and thinking, man, what type of article should I write on best water filter, 
or whatever. <laughs> this is 212 ideas. Look at one of these and think, oh, you know what? This would work. Re- this would be a great debate post, right? I should quote what somebody, some other big blogger said about water filters and totally take the opposite side and call them out on it. Okay. Maybe that doesn't work with water filters, but I think you get the idea. Yeah. Okay. Right? This is a great way to to brainstorm a ton of ideas. And these are really, really great ideas, so I don't want to just gloss over it. It's definitely worth reading. Okay. Um, here's here's uh, four or five types that, that maybe we'll sort of focus on that uh, I kind of like. I, I'm not saying that these are the best, but I kind of like these. Um, so product reviews with a table. Are you familiar with these types? This is what I did on you know my survival knife site and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm familiar with the survival knife, the famous table that you created. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, that's basically, you know, why is it not letting me click on this? There we go. Uh, you know, these are the type that most, I will say, niche website builders do that are building these Amazon affiliate websites. You know, here's just a quick uh, look at an example. You know, basically creating a chart with the different options and a short description and saying the good, the bad, that sort of thing, whatever, right? And I usually like to compare overall ratings or maybe price, size, whatever it might be, right? So just an article with charts and comparisons in that. It's a great way to review products. It works very well, and yes, uh, it's been done a lot, but it does work really well. Okay. Um, Now, content aggregator. That's a different um, type than what we've talked about here a little bit, but let me show you a good example of one here. This is on, again, survivallife.com. So basically what they have done here is they've aggregated um, tons of content written by other people. See all these quotes? This big one under the potatoes section. So basically what the content aggregator is, you write a short introduction, okay, on whatever topic it is, and then you basically copy and paste quotes from lots of other resources okay and again this is totally legit it's not illegal to quote other people they you know link out to them so this is from offthegridnews.com where they got this quote and they just do this you know for the 20 items right so this is an excellent article lots of images great quotes um, so you write a short introduction and then, you know, probably a short conclusion here and say, yep, these are 20 great, looks like they don't even have a conclusion. So, um, not necessary, but I can tell you th- that I don't know if this particular article, but there's other articles on survivallife.com that do very well where, you know, they've only written what is, you know, three or 400 words of original content, um, but they've aggregated a lot of great content that it, it does really well in Google. They rank really well for these keywords. Okay. Okay. So okay. that's totally legit. You don't have to be 100% unique. It's okay to aggregate content, to, to curate content. Okay. Any questions or mm, anything Not else? yet. Not yet. Okay. You're just an expert here. <laughs> if only. If only that were true. This is all old news to Samara. Yeah, I'm actually reading a magazine while you give this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I yeah, believe it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here's another one. This is, uh, I forgot what the title was. Uh, this is the uh, embed and react type article. Okay. Okay. So this is this is similar in that you're curating content here, um, but basically what they do, I think this one is a yes, it's a infographic that they got from somebody else. Okay, so this is somebody else's infographic, but basically they embed this on their site, which again is totally fine to do, and they link okay. out to the source, and then they react to it. Um, so they say we think this infographic is great for X, Y, and Z, and we think it's bad for, 
you know, this, this, and this, right? So it's a great way to get good t content, um, and here's where they react. They actually have, I think, a few different people react to that content, basically, is what's going on. So embed and react. You can embed an infographic or a video or whatever, and then just post your reactions to that. It's great content that, yeah, your, your readers in your niche probably would enjoy reading. Now, can I ask, when you are um, using other people's content, do you look at the stats for those websites, or you just you use what's most useful for your readers, right? You don't look to see, oh, this website has a domain authority of blah, 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 so I'm going to use their content, or do, do you do that? Oh, Does I, that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. I, I don't look at their domain authority or anything like that. Okay. Um, it is kind of a popular practice to use things like BuzzSumo to see what articles are performing well on social media, hmm. right? So it's not so much an authority thing, but you can go to BuzzSumo and that's what they do. And you can type in, um, you know, survival knife and you can see which blog posts talk, talking about survival knife have been shared the most on the web. Oh, interesting. Right? Okay. And so then you basically what you do with that information is you say, well, I'm going to write a similar blog post and maybe I'll quote some of these that have been shared a lot and that okay. sort of thing. Right. Okay. Yep. So, okay. okay. Uh, quote and post. Um, I think it's pretty much exactly the same as, as the content aggregator. Let me, let me double check that. Um, not sure it's worth uh, reviewing, but uh, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, that's essentially what they're doing. They're yeah, quoting and, and, and posting information there. So okay. um, this last one, the YouTube cut up is a little bit different. It's kind of cool. Uh, this works really well for tutorials. If you're teaching people how to do things, basically what you do while my computer's thinking about this, um, you take a YouTube video and you take screenshots of that video and say, here's step one. So this example, um, you know, cute do-it-yourself rug home furnishing tutorial, right? So they took a tutorial that somebody did on YouTube, again, not your own video, and they took screenshots of the video and described the steps that were happening in the video and just wrote them in text format, in blog post format. So if we scroll down here, these are all just screenshots from YouTube. And with the steps written under it. So it's a YouTube cut up. And then, of course, they have the entire YouTube video here, um, you know, that uh, that you can watch if you want to watch the whole thing. So kind of a cool idea, especially if you're doing tutorials. Great way to, again, curate content um, and post step by step instructions, even if you're not the expert. You don't have to say, hey, I'm the expert. You say, hey, we found a great YouTube video and here's what was on it. And we took the extra step of cutting it up into images and writing out the steps for you. Hope you like it. Okay. Interesting. So you don't, you don't have to ask permission. You just, as long as you cite the source, you're good to go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. YouTube is a public website. I mean, YouTube has links for you to embed the videos on your website. Most people want you to embed it on your website because that gets them more views and followers. Um, I think somebody'd be crazy if they didn't want you want your video on their website. Okay. Anyways, okay. that that's my reaction. Okay. Cool. And thought process. So, hopefully, that gets the the brainstorming juices flowing. Right. That's that's kind of the idea here is that um, we don't have to to write only one type of article. We don't always have to do uh, product reviews with a the table. There's 212 other ideas out there. OK. Now, would would any of these formats work for a pillar article? Yes, I think any of them would. OK. Yeah. Okay. So you don't need to stick to one for one kind of article and another for another kind of article. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can mix and match. I mean, um, any of these could be normal articles, right? They could just be shorter sort of um, uh, blog posts. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I think either or could work. Okay. All right, so how to create a great title. Um, do you understand the importance of blog titles? Um. 
Do I understand the importance of blog titles? Um, maybe not. I mean, I assume they're important, but I don't know what to what degree they are important. I mean, why why are they so important? Well, <clears throat> I you know I guess everybody's cheated already and read my first bullet point, but a great a great title gets more clicks on Google in particular, right? So. Um, I don't know. I didn't even think this through, but let's maybe look at an example. So we've been doing survival knives too much. Do, can you think of another example of just a, a a product or any short phrase? Um, Like gardening shears? Like we've been doing gardening? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's gardening shears. Let me pull that over. I don't know. I was just going to see if there's any great titles here, but there may not be because it's such a boring topic. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Um. No. No. Um. Hmm. Okay. Well, that that experiment failed. Let me let me just tell you about great blog post titles. I need to not veer off of my presentation too much. Okay. Um. So basically, even if you're not ranked number one, let's say you're ranked third or fourth or fifth, but if you have a really like catchy blog post title, you still might get more clicks than the number one guy because your title sounds more interesting. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of human psychology here, though. Here, at play, you don't have to be number one in Google to get the most clicks. If you're more interesting, you very well might get more traffic to your website than the guy ranked above you. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very important, um, not just for Google, but also people are going to be more willing to share your article on social media, um, and of course, as they share that, that's going to generate more backlinks. Um, so it really is important from a marketing standpoint uh, to put a lot of effort into creating great blog post titles. So I'm not going to give a whole dissertation. Frankly, I'm not the expert at creating great blog post titles. I know it needs to be done, and I try to implement what I know. Um, but there are a couple of experts out there. I'm going to just have you read these. Um, and I'll have this in the assignment section, of course. But uh, quicksprout.com has a definitive guide on creating headlines. And then there's one at WordStream here. There's a couple of others. But uh, these will give you a really great idea. Um, some of the things that I sort of like to, to focus on is, is lists do really well. Just mm -hmm. lists, period. So, you know, uh, the, the 10 greatest gardening shears, you know, you, you've ever laid your hands on. All right, that was really bad. But lists do really well and lists with odd numbers, believe it or not. So the number huh. 7 or 9 or whatever do a lot better than even numbers. Um, okay. And I think the reason for that is people sort of think, oh, this must be legit. You know, if they just say 10, it's like, yeah, sure, they just came up with 10. But if they say 13, you're like, oh, that's interesting. Must <laughs> really be 13 cool things here. Okay. Uh, um, uh, of course, you want to include your keywords in your title, like I said. Um, and there's some other strategies that um, after you read these, you'll, you'll have some other ideas. But there's a couple of cool tools that I wanted to show you here. Um, this one is uh, the co-schedule analyzer. And uh, we talk about this quite a bit, actually, in Longtail University, I think. So maybe you're familiar with this? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, again, you're, you're busy reading your magazine article. And I've, I've moved on painting my nails, this so <laughs> feel free. This is all sure. boring stuff. All right. I'm glad you can at least be productive while we're on our call, though. So, um, so of course, this asks you to th – this is a way to check how good your, your blog post title is. So what was my really bad uh, blog post title? We'll check how good that was. Um, uh, what did I say? Ten – top ten uh, – Gardening shears, if that's even a thing that you've ever laid your eyes on or something. Sure. The 10 best gardening uh, shears you've ever laid your eyes on. Whew. All right. Man, this is nerve-wracking. 
let's see how we did. So it'll pull back a score, and again, my uh, computer's a little s slow here because we're recording video and everything else. So we got a headline score of 64. Let's see what that means here. Come down here, gives us a B plus. So we're passing, but okay. uh, not fantastic. Um, and it sort of gives you some reasons why you scored well or didn't score well. We don't have any uncommon words in here. We don't have any emotional words. Um, we do have, it looks like we do have one power word in there. I don't, oh, best. That's our power word, I guess, okay. here. Right? So, um, anyways, and it, it also gives you some uh not only reasons why you did well, but how you can improve, and then I think there's some training on here and how you can improve that. So it's a cool little tool to see how you've done. All right. Cool. Okay. Um, so this advice is legit. What this website says, it's yeah, it's be, it's okay. pretty good. I mean, nothing is the law here, but uh, okay. I think it does a pretty good job of um, sharing what might be a good or bad blog post that that might have viral potential or that is more catchy right okay. mm -hmm. um, and then there's one other here that actually generates blog post titles for you okay so you just input uh, I believe your keywords here so let's um, let's go with gardening cheers Describe your keyword. Is a generic term? Is a brand or product? Yes. Let's go with that. I know that... Okay. Oh, interesting. Uh huh. 15 facts about gardening shears that will blow your mind. <laughs> the, the story of gardening shears has just gone viral. Um, so there you go. It gives you some ideas, right? That's interesting, yeah. That looks fun. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Get the juices flowing. Again, more of a brainstorming tool. You know, Obviously, you'd come in here and maybe tweak it a little bit, uh, that sort of thing. But a couple of cool resources for coming up with uh, potentially great blog post titles. Okay. All right, so we are moving right along. I think we're actually getting pretty close to wrapping up here. So uh, Thrive Content Builder. Um, you've installed Thrive Themes, right? I have. Now yep. there's a content builder. I don't know. Did you have a chance to play around with that at all? I haven't. I haven't looked at it. Okay. So there's a visual editor within Thrive, which basically is it's like a WYSIWYG, um, meaning that uh, you can basically drag around uh, images and um, formatting. Um, so you don't have to do any programming on WordPress, but you can come up with really well formatted, formatted and good looking blog posts. Okay. okay. And so rather than spend the call here, you know, doing a tutorial on Thrive Visual Editor, um, I'd encourage you to take a look at the, uh, the video that I've linked here. Um, it's basically a tutorial of how to use the content builder. It's a, the content builder quick tour here. Um, I would watch that video and that'll give you some ideas of how you can structure your content to maybe look a little bit better. They have like um, they have a lot of templates, image templates in there. So if you want to have buttons, they have really well styled and built out buttons for you that you can drag into your blog posts, you know, without going through a lot of extra effort and things like that. Okay. Okay. So I mentioned that just as because it's a it's a cool way to build great looking blog posts. Um, and for those of you out there that uh, are interested in checking out Thrive, again, this is my affiliate link over at nichepursuits.com slash Thrive. Um, so that's what uh, Samara is using, and then also the, the other students are using as well. So uh, Colleen and Ryan are also going to be using Thrive Themes and uh, possibly the Thrive Content Builder on their websites. Okay. All right. We're at the assignments page. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you have any questions of anything that I went over or anything that came up while you were painting your toenails? <laughs> um, actually, yeah, I have a question. Um, it's about pillar articles okay. and, and the ordinary articles. How do I pick which keywords I'm going to target for the pillar articles? 
That's a good question. Um, I would I would usually go for the higher search volume keywords. Okay. I would make those into the pillar articles. Okay. Is typically what I would do. And so, so regardless of the, I mean, obviously the KC is going to be below thirty or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if I get. It's all going to be search volume. It doesn't matter if the KC is higher or lower than another keyword. It's the search volume, correct? Correct. Yeah, generally speaking. And the only reason I say, you know, not 100% always uh, is because sometimes it just, the keyword doesn't make sense to be a um, pillar article. You kind of have to use some intuition there, okay. I guess. Uh, but, uh, yeah, generally speaking, I would just stick with what has the higher search volume. That's going to be the one that's going to be worth putting in a little bit more effort and creating a pillar article around. Would you write a pillar article around a keyword that only gets 30 searches a month? Yeah. You know, I I would. Um, Again, it kind of depends on how firmly you believe in that keyword and think it deserves a big pillar article. Okay. So, sorry, I don't have, like, definitive answers one way or another, but uh, at least generally speaking, I I would go with the higher search volume. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, that's, that's all, that's the only question I have at present. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So here's the assignments for call six. Um, read Brian Dean's on page SEO guide. Okay. And, uh, we, we really covered all of, I believe pretty much everything he says in that guide on our call here, we already covered, but if you read through that, that'll be a good, um, sort of refresher, those are the best practices for how to structure content and uh, how you need your, your pages to be so that Google you know, can find them and crawl them and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, and then the other one that I mentioned already, read digital marketer blog post ideas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I want you to figure out five, your first five to seven categories and create them in WordPress. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also want you to read these headline resources that I mentioned again as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, watch the Thrive Content Builder video tutorial there. And then finally, I want you to tackle your first two articles for the site. Okay. Do you think you can do that in a week? Uh, yes, I do think I can do that. Absolutely. So two pillar articles I should write, no? What, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think that would be a good way to go. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, and I pick whatever format I think works best with the keyword. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And again, I'm here to, to, to coach and, and help out. So if you do have any questions, like you're really not sure, let me know. We'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. But yeah, generally speaking, there's, you know, there's no rule that says, okay, for a pillar article, you must do a YouTube cut up. You know, or whatever. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Any format you want. You know, if it's product focused and you are reviewing a specific product, a, ta- a product table really does make a lot of sense. You know, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Okay. Um, all right. All right. That sounds good. So if I'm going to recommend products, for example, um, I am going to, I'm not really sure how to do that. I mean, how do I like embed the link to go to such and such a site or I need to, do I need to have an affiliate account with a certain place where they sell that product or, I mean, what would you recommend? Ah, so you're, you're getting onto monetization, aren't you? Yes. Well, I just, I thought that, I thought the, I thought a pillar article is a money article. You yes. Know? Or, I mean, I'm happy to write an informational article if you think that's what I should do. <laughs> Yep. No, it absolutely is. Um, my thought was that uh, we will come back to the articles and add all your affiliate links after you've written them. Okay. Okay. It's okay. sort of what I'm doing just to keep it bite-sized because monetization is going to be an entire uh, call on its own. And I believe that's our next call, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes. Our next subject to tackle is monetization. Okay. So, um, for now, just get your two articles written, and yes, absolutely, if they're product-focused, we will be linking to Amazon or whatever with an affiliate link uh, to make money from those articles. Um, but right now, 
Um, <clears throat> don't worry about adding those. We'll come back okay. and do that next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> and, I mean, for the blog post types, these can be sort of a combination of, of all of the above, if you know what I mean. Um, they don't have to be strictly like a product table and and that's it, right? You could do a product table and still make it a sort of a quote and reaction, right? So you could quote a bunch of customers that have bought this product and say, here's what customers have said, and then you quote them, right? And then maybe you react to some of their quotes and say, well, it sounds like Sally has really had trouble with these garden shears because of this. In my research, I found that these garden shears have better handles, right? So yeah. you can quote a bunch of people and then just react to their quotes within your product review slash table type article. Okay. Okay. You already, you already know all this. This is I, – I don't even – I only mention it for others listening in. It's not for you. You are way ahead of us all. <laughs> um, all right, then. All right. <laughs> no, I mean that in a good way. I, I believe that you're a great writer. I'm confident that you're going to have really good articles. I'm excited to see uh, what you have. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm excited to get cracking. Yep. That sounds good. All right. Okay. So very cool. I think that wraps it up. Um, I'm excited. You're going to have your first couple of articles on the site. Uh, we're going to start getting the structure there. And, um, yeah, after our next call, after we talk about monetization a little bit, it's, um, you know, that the long-term content strategy is really going to be in place, and we're going to just be able to start cranking out articles. Okay. Sounds good. I cool. like it. Thank you, Spencer. Awesome. Well, very good. I appreciate your time once again, and uh, excited to see what you have to present for everybody uh, next week. Thank you, Spencer. All right. I'll talk to you then. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye-bye.